Chokhar Khambe Pala Behep Ye Sovit Bacha Dear Led Miss Tears Pala Dinkame Trouble Yes, too many beers We'll hang with the fire, release I fear. Nothing can compare as a child. Nothing can compare as a child. I can't compare it was a Good evening. Welcome to TCB Studios. Thank you to the Tom Cheshire Band. Welcome to Burn It Down, Episode 2. I can't believe we made it this far to a second episode. And people said it wouldn't last. Well, I got some words for the haters out there. Don't hate. Celebrate. And don't hate. Participate. I hope you beautiful, sexy Cucumbers are doing awesome out there. And I hope that you are choosing awesome. Welcome to episode two, Electric Boogaloo. I'd like to thank Kelly's Death Pickles tonight. Check out Kelly's Death Pickles on Facebook, Instagram. Order some pickles from their Etsy shop. They are the best humans, and they make the best pickles. All of my jars are empty, and now pen holders. Because as soon as I get them, I eat all the pickles in one sitting. I've said it before, I'll say it again. You know you are doing something right when the guys from Slayer and the guys from Rancid are eating your pickles. Hit me up. I'll introduce, I'll introduce you to Kelly, the man, myself. I'm so glad I got to tell you a little bit about myself last week. Well, this week, I'd like to tell you a little bit more. We have a very special guest tonight. This person is a writer, a musician, a chef, an all around badass human. I knew him as LSC in the 80s. Then he started, started using his bad birth name Ladies and gentlemen, 
one of the funniest men I know, and one of the smartest men I know. My brother, Scott Cheshire. What? <laughs> talk about <laughs> blushing. Talk about blushing. How are you doing? How can I live up to that introduction? <laughs> I know. That's what we do. We're insecure <laughs> artists and we stroke each other's e egos and we make each other uncomfortable. How you been? I'm good. How you doing? Doing good. Where are I'm you right now? Are you back in New York City? I'm back in New York City. We were in uh, we were in Cape Cod for about a week, which was just cold and isolated and beautiful. We loved it. We got back on Saturday um, and back in New York and happy to be home, but it, it's cold here too. Yeah. Where are you now? Yeah. I'm in Atlanta at TCB Studios. Thank you for thank you for bringing it up. We're trying to rebrand. Uh, appreciate it. You look good. You look beautiful. Um, and you know, I got a bunch of softball questions. I got a bunch of softball questions. We're gonna throw out at first, you know. So, uh, so first things oh, first. Um, how how long have I known you? It's a long time now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know. It's so funny that I said I've known you since the '80s, but no, it's been since the '70s, I guess. <laughs> uh, but you know what's funny though is like, I mean, it's what I'm 48, so we've known each other a very long time, at least 30 years. But what's funny is that at least 30 years, yes. We don't start really hanging out until like mid to late teens, right? No, you know what's funny. Uh, uh, it's easy for me to say life is cruel, but uh, people are cruel, and we all, even the best of us, like, I've been cruel. I know I wasn't the best uh, older brother to you when we were younger, so I apologize oh, to that. I apologize to you for yeah. that, because uh, we knew each other. Well, God damn it, we knew each other in the 70s and the 80s, and then probably, uh, I know you looked up to me for a moment. Um, and thank you for that oh, in the mid '80s, and and then I probably still wasn't the kindest to you, but then something happened, and we really did become best friends. And luck, we're very lucky. We've been best friends ever since. Absolutely, you're the first person I call whenever anything happens in my life, or if I have a question about something to do, I call you. Um, yeah, that's you're my best friend. Oh man, well. Like I said, you know, I got these softball questions, but they are going to get darker and deeper because you and I, we we have these late nights and talk about these things. And I want to share that with the people that I've met uh, this past year during the pandemic, you know. So first things first, I wanted to ask you, what was your first concert you went to? Say again? Your first concert that you went to. Goodness, sorry. Um, my first concert would have been a very, very new wave concert. It was Nights or Ebb on the Ebbhead tour. See, it would have been like the late, early 90s. Maybe 90s so see, already, already you're proving yourself, yeah, already you're proving yourself to be cooler than me because my first one, <laughs> well, when I even talk about it, you know, but like, so you, you looked up to me. So this is the thing that I remember. So do you, do you remember us going to, so, so you moved to Atlanta from New York before I did with our parents. And do you remember seeing uh, Beachy Boys and Rollins band at Georgia State in 1992? That was one of the best things I've ever seen in my entire life. That was amazing. That was me you, right? and Mike Patton, not the Mike. Yes. More, our yes. friend Mike Patton. Yeah, right. It was like a fake ass Mike Patton from Faith the More. And the and the thing is, is like I remember like as great as the concert was, one of the greatest things was was seeing Henry Rollins in just shorts on and no Absolutely. shirt on the side of the stage singing every lyric to the Beastie Boys dancing around. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Life I remember change. that too. And, and just like so you, singing to so everything you, they did. So a year before you saw Nitrab, you know, and then you see that, and then you and I went to see Leonard Cohen on the Future Tour at the Roxy. Yeah. 
1992. Yeah. And the reason I bring this up is, is because, well, one, I'm a huge Leonard Cohen fan. And as a writer and as a poet, uh, he's done so much for me. But how cool is it that me at 21 and you at 18 saw that show? I know. I'm so thankful for it because I still listen to him so much. I love him. Um, life, life, life I, changing. I very, life changing. That. Yeah, I feel very lucky that we went and did that. In fact, you remember we went we went round back to his bus, and he this came out of the wanted, bus in yeah, a room. This is what I wanted to ask you about. Yeah, because I remember meeting people who who certainly hung out with Bob Dylan and uh, Pete Seeger and uh, Leonard Cohen backstage, and they're telling us stories about hanging out with Leonard Cohen. And uh, the funniest thing is, is 92, I guess, uh, Snoop came out with the, the Doggy Style album. Whatever. But so there were people backstage, some young kids going, you know, Leonard Cohen's in the motherfucking house. <laughs> like, you know, but it really was that, um, it was that amazing. It was that like, I mean, I, I, and I saw Leonard Cohen before he passed uh, a few years ago, which was still so spiritual and amazing. But how amazing is that we saw him during that time? Yeah, I, and I remember just to our right, in, there was a woman holding a painting. A yes, that yeah. she, I, I guess she was holding it on her black for the entire show. <laughs> Unreal. Yeah, and, I mean, it, we, was, it was like... When we it, was like going to folk, to see him. it was like going to folk, co folk college and learning from people. Oh, yeah. That's a, that so amazing. Out. When he came out of the bus, he, he told us, um, I want to come out and say hello to each one of you, but I'm an old man. I have to go to bed. And then he went back on the bus. Well, yeah. Look, I, I mean, for me, as, as a, and we are going to get into this. Um, for me, as a writer and a poet and a musician, he is, is the bar, you know, and... When I write something, I go, yes, would this pass his, you know, would this be okay with him? Yeah, wow, yeah. That's high bar. He's just amazing. But you're amazing. I mean, I've been asking you how you do what you do since you started doing it. Well, so I want to thank Tardan Media. I want to thank Jonathan. I want to thank Renee. Um, and thank you for that and, and vice versa. And I want to get into it because you and I, we were little boys in Queens, New York. Um, our dad, a crazy house painter. Our mom, a Chilean uh, immigrant who uh, they had good dreams. Uh, we had bands called, uh, for a minute, your name was, you changed your name to Jake for a minute. <laughs> you know, for, for a minute, your name was Scotty Waddy Dudu, author Jimmy J. John Jr. the uh, third. For for a minute, we had a band called Jimmy Jack Joe and the Endocrine System. Um, wow. And, 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 and we do, and we did things. And we tried to play music. And, but, and, and it was, a, a lot of it was in the name of art. Um, but, you know, we, we know that we really didn't know completely what we were doing. And then one day you said, no, I'm going to be a writer because you play drums with me. Um, and I know you still can write. And I know one day you and I will do an album called The Fat Nose Twins. And I know one day we'll do an <laughs> album called Pen Pals. I know I know we I know we have these still these albums in us, you know, but um, but one day you were like, no, I'm done. I'm going to write and you and write. You did, you know, and uh, uh, thank you so much for including me in on that process. Um, I, I, you certainly let oh, me yeah. help you edit and, and, and give and voice back uh, my opinion on some of your writing and uh, your first book, high as the horse with bridles, which I love to death uh, came out in 2014. Like how many years total did that book take to, to write and, and accomplish. Well, I used to tell people that it took me eight years because it sounded cool, you know? Um, but right. I don't really know how long it took, to be honest. I mean, I, I started it in, in school. I, I, I went to a writing school, Hunter College here, and that's when I got my MFA. So I started there. Um, mm -hmm. But then 
I tend to think it started before then because I started writing a short story about a kid who was giving a sermon to a, to a large congregation. So I kind of, count, mm -hmm. so if I count from there, it took a long time. 10 or 12 years, 10 or 12 years, maybe. Long time. Yeah. Hopefully and, the second doesn't the take as long. And, and, and that's, kind, that's kind of what I'm kind of getting into because I remember us talking and thank you for including me in on this, you know, and, and I, I would, I would give my opinions on what you were working on, uh, being a soft editor, you know, and I know you have other people like your wife and people that are very important to you that you, you bounce your, your ideas off of, you know, but, um, but I remember, I remember saying, talking to you about th this process. And, and I remember, you know, you, you saying to me, like, well, I don't know how you wrote The, De the Devil Call Me Tommy, which is a song that I wrote for the band Western Motel. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I wrote it in my sleep in three minutes. How did you write 400 pages of <laughs> high, horse, high Horses Bridles? You know, and it just shows you that we're as similar as we are, we can be so different, you know. And it got it. It just gets me to always think about like um, the life of an artist, the life of a writer, the life of a painter. The life of an artist can be a really lonely life, you know. And we're always painting ourselves into or writing ourselves into these strange corners that we don't know if we can get out of them. And I know I've been there before, and I've I pushed away people that love me. And it has to be even worse for someone writing a novel like yourself. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can't, I, yeah, I, I think it's really hard. I can't speak for you because I can't imagine doing what you do. I don't know how it's done. Um, it amazes me. Um, but I do know that writing, for me, you're spending the whole day making up voices in your head, um, which mm -hmm. can become a little maddening if you're not careful. Um, and it's also can be a very lonely place, which is one of the reasons why when I'm, when at least pre pandemic, I do a lot of writing in cafes or, you know, coffee shops because I'm around people and it's a little less lonesome. At least you hear noises. Yeah. 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 Some people find it distracting, but, but it helps me. So after that book, which is so lovely, and I tell everyone to read Highest Horses Bridles. Um, you did work on two other books for a long they time. Did. Yeah. And they didn't work. They, they didn't work. They didn't go the way you wanted. No. That has got, I mean, I, which, I guess what I want. And it's it's so um, difficult, but it's also it's the life of an artist, you know. So now you're working on a new book. Yeah, working on a new book, um, and I should say the two books that didn't work didn't. It's not that they didn't. I didn't make any. That they didn't get. They didn't get published. Is what happened. I worked on them for a long time, and and they just didn't work, right. so they couldn't get published. Um, this new one, which I feel really good about, I'm I'm taking my time with. Um, my wife's reading it now. Another friend just read it. Um, it'll go to you soon. Um, I can't wait. I feel good about it. I feel good about I it. I cannot wait because I love uh, the way your brain works. Um, we share so much uh, memories, some good and some bad, you know, um, but that's what makes us so special, <laughs> our, our, our love and our friendship. And uh and that's what makes us create what we do create, you know? So uh, I cannot wait to read what is going on um, this next project. I also think that sometimes we know what's best. Like, or we don't know what's best. Like, you know, you've taken a whole new route, like, you know, cause you were teaching at Queens college and you were writing and you had, you basically were, dedicating your time to this one thing and now you've taken a whole new route like you're like no i'm not teaching i'm working during the day and at night i'm writing and that kind of uh is the way i work you know because i you know i work yeah. and then at night or my free time i write the stuff that i write 
And I really do think it's going to change, or I'm I'm going to see that see see change in 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 your writing. Yeah, I think so. I hope so too. Um, just trying to find balance when you're trying to make stuff is is important. So that's what I'm trying to do is find balance. Exactly. Exactly. Um, do you have a work? Any ideas for a working title of this new project? I did, but. A friend of mine who read what I have told me I can't use it, <laughs> and he convinced me not to. Um, okay. So I have no. no title right now. I mean, listen, I, that, I, and that's the no. thing. We titles need are hard. We, titles are hard. Titles can be everything. I've seen wonderful movies, and I've hated it at the end, even after I saw it, because I hated the title. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's just, know, it's, 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 it's a crazy thing, but um, I cannot wait. Um, so I've been thinking about, we, we, our, our close relationship, you know, the past few years, one of my favorite things is like, we would meet at this place called Housing Works, which is a, a, a bookstore of Houston in New York City. And yeah. uh, all the, all, all the, all the proceeds went to, um, the homeless and people with AIDS, which is so wonderful. And those are my favorite times in New York City, literally. Um, so no matter where I've been, and, and so I know, I know we've been lucky, I guess lucky during this pandemic, where we've, we've met in Atlanta a couple of times or we met in Asheville. But the sad thing to me is, is like, you know, I lived in New York and especially if I wasn't traveling for work, we would see each other and try to see each other a few times a week, go to housing works or, you know, to, well, Tom and Jerry's, you know, of Houston, you know, and it is like, it's been, it's been so rough for me because I hate that I haven't, it's been, it breaks my heart that it's been this long since I've seen you. I know. I know there's too many miles between us. It's, it's, it's not good. <laughs> way too many miles, way too many miles. And, and and I know, and there's so much more that I want to talk about and share with, with you as like, you know, the journey of a writer. And I, I know that I'm going to share more about what's going on in, in your next book. I'm certainly going to push High as Horses Bridles because High as Horses Bridles is such a beautiful book. And I remember you telling me, and even when you were teaching in Queens College, you would say, you know, listen, there's no such thing really as like, Everything actually is somehow autobiographical. And you, you, at one point, you were like, "I walk in with a boombox and play Joy Division and and suicidal <laughs> tendencies." Like, there, there's no happy, there's no happy ending, you know. Like, you know, real life is this, you know. And it's yeah. it's my favorite thing. It's my favorite thing. Thank you for doing that and pushing that, you know, because no, we don't need we don't need the happiest. Endings. We need real endings, you know. Yeah. I mean, life. You know, like we're looking for happiness, and at the same time, we hit a lot of bumps, and things don't end well. <laughs> to the end of a bump. They don't. They don't. They don't. They don't. We want them to, but but also that's a wicked sense of humor. It's good that we get laugh at it, you know. <laughs> You know, oh man. So I wanted to ask you, which is really funny. Um, it's funny that I talked about that Beastie Boys concert um, uh, in 1992 at Georgia State with Rollin Fan. I think it was Ice Cube, and uh, like that 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 was such a that was such a great show. I, wa I wanted to ask you about what celebrities have you been mistaken for in the past. <laughs> Because well, I know my call me MC Search. <laughs> MC well, yeah, you definitely went MC Search from third base back in the day. I'd like to think of you actually us at TCB Studios. I've heard that you're a really, really good looking uh, Drew Carey. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not as good, not as good looking Huey Lewis. 
Yeah, but hey, so, <laughs> so, so, do you, so you know the pizza, you know the pizzeria on St. Mark's and First Stromboli's, which was actually the Beastie Boys, um, the cover of the book. You know the Stromboli's Pizza, St. Mark. So I go there all the time. Literally, and when I walk in there, they go, "How you doing, Alex Baldwin?" And I go, "What?" <laughs> they're always like, "Alex, Alex Baldwin, how are you doing?" I go, "What are you talking about?" They're like, "Alex was in here yesterday. I told him about you." And I'm like, "What are you talking about?" They go, "Alex Baldwin, you look just like Alex Baldwin." I go, "You mean Alec Baldwin?" <laughs> yeah. And they go, "They go," and I know because I know people who know Alec Baldwin and he lives on 10th and 1st and so St. Mark's is what is considered 7th and 1st in, in East Village you know and they, and they go Alex Baldwin he eats here all the time I go yeah he lives on 10th and 1st three blocks away why wouldn't he come in here and get a slice of pizza they go you look just like Alex Baldwin and I go that's cool and they go you know who's cool I go who and they go Leonardo DiCaprio and I go, they go okay and that's what they go he's so cool I go I'm sure he is cool. They go, you know who isn't cool? And I go, who? They go, Matt Damon. And I go, really? He seems nice. They go, he's a fan of the Red Sox. And I go, well, I'm actually a Met fan. I don't like the Yankees, you know. Insane. <laughs> but anyway, Stromboli Pizza, I guess uh, Alec Baldwin and Leo DiCaprio and uh, Matt Damon have been hanging out there these days. Uh, oh man! I I just want to. I miss. Th th what's that? I miss you, man. I do. I'm. Oh man. Oh, Sue. That's the thing. Um, it's 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 it's. Man, thank you for saying that. Um, I want to say, uh, can we meet at Tom and Jerry's this Friday at three p.m.? <laughs> That'd be so great. Yeah, I would yeah, love that. So, uh, so, I'm so ask me, can you? So, say, can you be at Tom and Jerry's Friday at 3 p.m.? Can you be at Tom and Jerry's Friday at 3 p.m.? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be there. <laughs> I, it, 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 it really, it really is like, and, and, and nothing like, no one even is going to even get any of this stuff because you are my brother, literally, who came out of my mother, who both of us sometimes can't stand. Um, I love you so much. We have witnessed, uh, well, some good things and some of the, the worst things ever. But um, yeah. for one, I want to thank I want to thank you for introducing me to Sama Rushdie at a party a few years ago. <laughs> I hang out with I hang out with Scotty. I introduced him to the guys from Anthrax. Scotty introduced me to Sama Rushdie. Um, I and I, <laughs> any any time of night. <laughs> Any any day, any time of night, um, you call me. I will answer the phone for you. Anytime. Um, much love to yeah, your we... editor, your your editor Kate here at TCV. We love Kate so much. Uh, love to Leonardo. He loves you. Thirty Blow minutes ago. So, yeah. Um, um, you know, we're trying to do some great things. Thank you to Renee and John Phipps and Tarda Media. And um, I'm going to do a song. And uh, I'll talk to you in the green room in a few minutes. And uh, I hope to see you at Tom and Jerry's in a few weeks. I love you. That sounds, I love you. Love you. Yes, I miss 
And I'll fix you. 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 Fix you. Thank you so much for everyone checking in. John, Renee, Dennis, Toda Media, Scott Cheshire. Much love.